Our lesson this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, the 47th chapter, beginning with verse 10 through 15. Our subject this morning, nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Our unified topic this morning, God foretells destruction. God foretells destruction. God foretells destruction. And you know, he has done that throughout, throughout Scripture. And he is still telling us, even today, about destruction. This morning, we're talking about Babylon. Well, Isaiah, he announced the conquest of, the, of Babylon by King Cyrus of the media Persian Empire. Now, Israel was set free by God's judgment. Israel was set free by his judgment on the oppressor. We can be assured that any of that oppressor that God is going to take care of. There is no if and a but about it. We might think that he should move quicker than he moved, but sometimes the reason that he allows us to go through these things is to strengthen us, and sometimes maybe because we were disobedient to whip us back in place. But either way that it goes, God is still in control. And there is no doubt about him being in control. So Babylonians, they wanted to rule the world. One of the most oppressive people ever to come on the scene of world history. They were ambitious people that became a vicious and ruthless people, tyrannizing and conquering one nation after another. After defeating the people, they enslaved and deported the entire population into other nations. Every nation was to be subjected under the rule and the law of Babylon. So all forms of cruelty and savagery were used against the people of other nations. Now Babylon is an ancient city. Babylon can be translated as to mean the gate of God. So God's I mean, God allowed the Babylonians to punish Israel by sending Nebuchadnezzar to conquer Judah and send the Jews into exile. Babylon remained the superpower, re remained a superpower until the Mede and the, the Fred, uh, Mede and Persia conquered Babylon in 539 BC. So Isaiah was announcing the conquest of the Babylonian king that was coming. God is the one that showed him what he was going to do. So the idols of Babylon are dim powers. And this is what Isaiah wanted to show them because they had put all of their confidence in the thing that they had and the mu mu musicians and, and sorcery and magic and working spells and portions and working with evil spirits, and yes, there's a spiritual warfare, and yes, this is why God said for us not to be dealing and dabbling with things like that. So these people were ones that did. Now remember, God just allowed these people, you, now let me rephrase that, God used this Babylon to chasten the Israelites because of their disobedience. So now what they had left in the promised land was the same one that was going to be a problem to them. This is why when God tells us to get sin out of our life, he wants us to get it out. When we find out it ain't there, we want it out. You see, we cannot live alongside sin because it has such a strong pool that it would draw you in. So by sin had drawn them in, God used the Babylonians to, and to bring Judah into captivity to punish them for not standing as the people of God that he had called them out to be. You see, the Israelites was supposed to be an example to the world. The Israelites was supposed to show the world what the true and living God looked like. The Israelites was supposed to be the hand of God against the sinners in Canaan. And this is why he gave them the land of Canaan that was flowing with milk and honey. But he also told them, I'm giving it to you. Now let's go, go take it. And God got before them. This is every time that they were obedient, they win. Every time they were disobedient, they lose. Every time they continue in disobedience, they go into captivity to 
to be punished. So now if God then punished for sin, what do we thank God do today? When God says I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He said he changed not. So whatever he meant yesterday is the same thing that he means today. And guess what? He means that same thing tomorrow. So with that being said on our introduction to bring us into our lesson today. See, they had plenty of knowledge in the world. They were renowned in it. But it was powerless against the sovereign judgment of the Lord. Yes. None of their astrology, understanding, or spells of witchcraft can prevent the disaster coming upon them. When God pronounced a judgment upon us, upon whoever it is, it don't make no difference who it is. When God pronounces a judgment, it's going to come to pass. There is no if, there is no end, and we can get the books out of the way because God is going to do exactly what he said that he's going to do. So God assured them no idol could have foretold these things or established his superiority over the gods and idols of other nations. And this is Isaiah 48. He is God and he is in control of the destiny of not only Israel, but all the nations that's on the globe. God is, I don't care what they look like even today. We see all of the chaos. We see all of the lawlessness. We see all of the plagues. We see diseases. We see people dying. We see war. We see rule of war. We see separation in our family. We see separation in our country. We see separation in religion. We see separation in the church. We see separation in society. We see separation in color. We got separation in families. Everything is divided. And the Bible says how divided it cannot stand. So this is why God bring his people back together that they may worship the one true and living God. And no other God but the one true and living God. They put their faith in the one true and living God. Not in witchcraft. Not in warlock. Not in witches. Not in magic. Not in the lottery. Not in the things of the world. But they put their trust in God and God alone. And this is why God was whipping them back in the plate. But even though he was whipping them back in the plate, the Babylonians, they had got so ruthless. They was actually taking advantage of God's people also. That God ain't going to continue to let them take advantage, even though he was using them to whip them back in the plate. But they had to get out of hand with it. So get what God said. I come here. I see somebody. I'll take care of you. So then, what are you coming? So, if there are no questions, no comments, we're going to start on our first outline. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, none see me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it has perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. Now, therefore, therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from which thou art, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thy enchantments, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so, be thou shalt be able to profit. If so, be thou made for that. Now, the first, he attacked the so-called gods of Babylon. And being powerless, he was actually being sarcastic about it. And they were some bold people. Do you notice down here at the end, they said, I am and none else besides me? They some bold people. Do you know they take this? The title of God Himself. When Moses asked the question, and God was sending him to deliver the children of Israel, he said, Who should I tell them that sent me? And God said, Tell them I am that I am. And guess what? There is no other besides Him. But guess what? They done got so powerful they think. You see, sometimes when we start to be Blessed, I am a true. 
We get caught up in ourselves. We get caught up in our job. We get caught up in our righteousness. We get caught up in our God. We get caught up in who we are and elevate ourselves into the position of God. Remember, that's the problem from the beginning. Oh. In the book of Genesis, oh. when, that, when Eve, he said, you, the devil told her the tree that she was gave to that, he said that it will make you as God. Yes. And you will know the difference between good and evil. Guess what? They didn't know anything but good. But when we decide to go on our own, because I want to know the difference. In other words, I want to make my own decision. I don't want God telling me what to do no more. See, everything that God has said to do, they were doing. They didn't know nothing about disobedience. But guess what? They were introduced to disobedience by wanting to be a God. And there is no person that's born on this earth that come through childhood until they meet Christ don't look at themselves as being a God. Why do you think we are so puffed up in ourselves, you can't talk to me any other way. You can't look at me any other way. Matter of fact, if you're trying to help me, you can't even help me in any kind of way. You got to help me like I want. A person can't do some time to a, bro, a, 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 a place to get a suit. They have them in there, they say you get three for $199. Ooh, man. A man tells you, say, come on, I'm going to take three people. I want to buy all of y'all a suit. He get in the store. They go and look at that suit, three for one hundred ninety nine dollars. But the man that buy him, he walk off and go over there where he get his suit in a different place. <laughs> Let me say again, this man buy him for himself and for you. Mm -hmm. Well, now his suit might be a little different because he paying for him. But guess what? I walk over and say, hey, I don't want them one of them cheap suits over there. I want one of you. I want one like that. You get. Wow. You see, we need to be to the point we're not thankful. The Bible says in the last day we're going to be unthankful, yeah. ungrateful, unholy, yeah. and we all of it. And bring up in our self. And our self alone. Sometimes we like little children. I saw my granddaughter the other day, but my daughter had the ball or something. She had it in her little hand. She said, Can I have something? She said, No, it's mine. The mama asked the son what bought it. She said, well, can I have some? She said, no, this mine. I looked at her, I said, you got any money? Mm -hmm. I said, you got a job? Mm -mm. Did you buy that? Mm -mm. Well, how is it yours? Somebody gave it to you. Huh? And you are not even willing to share with the one that bought it for you. Wow. We are. So wow. ungrateful, unholy. Wow. You know, we, right now, we look around in the house of God. It's empty. You can go to the back woods where somebody said they throw it apart. Right for wood. They ride, they nice and caught out in one day room. They ride, they nice truck down the one day room. They ride, they throw it down the one day room. And all of them pile up in the woods somewhere. With dust all over their car and say, hey, we're gonna have a party. And these same people hold positions in God's house, but all of a sudden, I ain't going to church, but I'm a teacher. I ain't going to church, I'm a preacher, but guess what? I ain't got used to sitting at home. I'll give them a little stuff on the phone. Just keep giving me my money. God said, for say, not the assembly of the same together. So guess what? We also are being hard here. Yeah. Yeah, too nice. Look how we done left, dog. God give you a new car, you drive it around so folks can see it. Yeah. But when you were walking, come yeah. on, and go. Uh -huh. Lord, if you just give me a vehicle, mm -hmm. I'm going to have a way to get the church there. God give to you. <laughs> well, you know, God know my heart. All of a sudden, he got to know your heart. Well, well guess what? Everybody that see you know your heart. Like you know it, not because your actions going to reflect whatever's in your heart. So now, they said, thou hast trusted in thy 
Hey, too loud. Hey, that's time. Give me something to drop the milk and give, make me something to give my child. God said, when I gave you, ain't good enough. Wow. And now, since I put my trust in the wickedness of the government, I'm dependent on them, and now I got a child suffering all because I don't put trust in the wickedness of the government. Wow. So I'm saying, well, well, you know all I mean, wicked. Let me tell you something. If you go along with me and I'm doing wrong, you check that guilty life. Yes, you not. So when we are supporting people that we, you better check yourself. Because you see, God gave up one out of two places to be. You fuck me, or you're against me. Yes. But guess what? I like what you said. Well, I don't see it that way. Because that person over there, I think that's a good person. Is he with them other folk? Mm. Yeah, he with them, but he's a good person. If he's standing with them and they standing against him, mm -hmm. and I stand with them, mm -hmm. I'm standing with him, I'm standing against him. Mm -hmm. There is no third place with God. Mm -hmm. Or, again, no, I don't want to get in the middle of it, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you with them then? Mm -hmm. well, Memorial, sir. 
And the young man had to put it down. And I was asking another preacher that was with me. I said, that young man, no, he preached. Preacher that was with me looked at me and said, but he ain't no me. He called his own name. He said, he ain't no me. See, I'm not going to call his name. I'm just going to say, he ain't no me. So I'm looking at him. I said, what you mean he ain't no me? He ain't no me. In other words, you done put yourself as being chosen by God above another person that's chosen by God. Mm. God don't have big eyes mm -hmm. and live you. Mm -hmm. Now God got the faith. He got the unfaith. He got the obedient. He got the disobedient. And those that's obedient, he's going to bless. And those that's disobedient, he's going to win. And if you don't get whipped by this place, don't go to sleep in the wrong place. Oh, yeah. That's all I can tell you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their their folk shall evil come upon thee. You know what? Let me show you something. A lot of time in our life, things come upon us. And we start to wonder why. Why did it happen to me? I tell y'all this all the time. Anytime things start to happen and you don't understand why did the mirror out the word of God. Look in that mirror, the word of God, and it'll tell you exactly what your problem is. And then what do we do? We try to correct that problem. Say, so he shall come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it rises. You don't know where it's coming from. And admit and miss it shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it on. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly without shall not come. Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. How can this happen to the Babylonians when they got all these warlocks? They, they, they got all their musicians. Sorcery. They, they got sorcery. They're dealing with the evil spirit. Maybe they got the wind you go. You know, and they caught enough spirit that supposed to fight for them. They, 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 this is the way that they, in other words, prepare their own future. None of us can see the future. We make plans. How many plans have you made in your life that didn't happen? You can't count. And all of those that are young, don't, don't, don't worry, they keep living. You still, a lot of plans you done made, you're going to get there and find out that didn't work. <laughs> and why, when we make our plan, we make our plan in God. Amen. In other words, you ask him, Lord, what would I have me to do? And then whatever God do with you, you carry him with you. And if you carry God with you, everywhere you go, he's going to keep carrying you all the place for the simple reason that you are bringing him along and telling them and living a life that they can see him in you. Guess what? If you got to make it, there is no one. And think of, and the thing about any type of position over here, it's temporary. Yeah, sir. It don't last. But those things that we are bidding on in eternity, those are the things that last for an eternity. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Let me tell you something else. I don't care how strong. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how much witchcraft you know. I don't care how much sorcery you know. I don't care what kind of spells you can put on. I don't Ooh. care what kind of spirit that you can call up when God says I'm against you. I'm telling you right now. All of that ain't going to do. Hallelujah. If you want to put your confidence in the spirit, Put it in the Holy Spirit. Yes, it does. Yes. That desolation should come upon these seven. God will have to wait a minute. Let me tell you something. We see people up today. It don't take God no five or six years to bring nobody down. Uh -uh. I don't live long enough to have seen what I could not believe. Uh -huh. And a millionaire that I knew personally, he went to sleep one night, he was a millionaire and woke up broke. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You said, 
got some good children, they go beat you, they do what they tell them, they, they clean up the room, you uh -huh. know what I mean? You ain't never got to tell them. You look around and say, Mama already cleaned the kitchen up. No. Mama already did my toilet in the room. Mama already had the scholar job. Dad already been cleaning up the yard outside. You know, Dad is not looking around and you might have just looked at old phone or something. You said, well, I'm not sure we're not. But guess what? Yes, you not. Not. Okay, now. Nah. Okay, now. Nah. Son, you need to do so and so. Y'all in your own field now. Right? <laughs> I'm tired. Tired of what? You ain't been in the world long enough to get tired. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Oh. Y'all need to do so and so. So now then, you go and you say, Mama, Dad, you ain't get me that thought wood. Oh, I ain't got no money. <laughs> yeah. let, let me show you something about that. <laughs> he said, the first time, I ain't got no money to be putting on the phone with for a lady's place. Said you not. That's what it's saying. Wait a minute, hold on, you need to get this. What do you think God said that to? Wow. Wow. But then we said, well, you know what, I'm going to get out there, you know, I'm strong. I'm going to go away. Get mine. And just fan and be ready to hear something. That's not.
How y'all did it? Let me make it really clear. Now he's talking about the people that belong to God. What did he tell them there? I know where you at. But God said to deliver you. And ain't nothing to buy you back. Are y'all getting this? Let, let me do it this way. We under attack all the time, aren't we? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Under attack. Most of the time, we give in to the attack. Yes. We start feeling defeat because we're under attack. Mm -hmm. But we got to start looking at our attacker. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, Lord, get me out of here. We should say, Lord, come on in here and tell me crazy.
And then see what the day going to bring me. Oh, thank you, Ryan. Now, what a fool that was. Get to now. I mean, think about that. Somebody done wrote down, look at that star, star game. Hmm. Okay, now, you born in this one. This what going to happen to you today. You born this time again. This what going to happen to you on this day. Only somebody can say that to God. The stargazer is staring at the star that God hung. The stargazer is creation. The star is creation. So you got creation looking at creation and trying to tell what tomorrow is going to be like instead of creation. Looking to the creator about what's going to happen to you. All of these people so stand up, save me from these things that shall come up. Come on now, y'all get around together and I want you to save me. Save yourself. Save yourself. Save all of the people. Now look what God said in verse, in verse 14 here through Isaiah. He said, The whole day shall be like stone. The fire shall burn them. They shall not be, they shall not deliver themselves from the fire of the flame. And why did it? In other words, what God is saying, all that they're trying to do to deliver you. Have you ever seen fire get strong? Yeah, oh yeah. Now you won't see a fire take off. Ooh. Let it hit strong. Look what God is telling y'all gonna be no more strong stuff. Now listen to it. He said, there shall not be a coal to warm them. Hold on. Y'all know what he's saying right there? The fire that I'm sending, it ain't going to be nothing you're going to set out and warm your stuff back. <laughs> no. no, you ain't going to set down. This ain't going to be one of the fire times. Ooh, we ain't going to be cold like that. Feel good. Uh -uh. You won't warm them by this fire. No. No, this one right here. It shall not be a cold to warm it, nor fire to set before it. Thou shalt they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored. You may not be no more. It's dull. Hold on, see, y'all not getting it. Isaiah is talking to the most powerful nation that's on the earth at this time. Now can you imagine a nation so powerful and they're listening to their destruction? How many of you may believe it? None. That's about that old crazy preacher. Yeah, it's a bit old crazy prophet. Talking a bunch of foolishness. They said one to everyone to his war. But no one, but I mean no one shall save me. Everyone wanted to his war. You know what he's saying right there? The people that you're looking for, to in other words, to help you, they can't help you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Look it up. Who do we look for ahead today, government? 911. <laughs> We know the government. That'd be about two hours. <laughs> when you got your play, man, people that got laid don't want to work, so they look at the government and do what? You just like, call oh, me. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. we got to the place. Mm -hmm. We have gone con contrary to the word of God. Mm -hmm. We doing things as I see it and how I feel. Mm -hmm. And the reason we do that, we don't spend enough time in the word of God. So how your mind will ever change well, when you start putting in foolishness? Mm. And everything we see today in here mm -hmm. is foolishness. Mm -hmm. It's foolishness. Mm -hmm. People, and we say they coming up off a of scene. Mm. Mm. Now how long do you think that's gonna last? It is a temporary. Matter of fact, everything on this earth now has got to be dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. People look at you and say, what you got? Well, how much you worth? How much I worth? Your net worth. My net 
network. It ain't got no network. It ain't nothing on this earth. It was me. Y'all, y'all. Y'all, is it something on this earth that's really worth you?
ask you a way, but the earth, hell, the people that want the earth, y'all want it? Y'all got it all. That's why John said, I see a new heaven and a new earth. See, God said, I got something brand new for my people. Hallelujah. There's some that say that the earth going to be remade. No. And some religions believe that, believe that. But John, they say, I see a, 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 a redid earth. Refur refurbished. He said, I see a new. He's not going to allow his righteous people. To live on remark corrupt in the world. Mm -hmm. It wasn't corrupt when he first put us here. We messed it up. So the one that we want to is not going to be corrupt and it's going to be evil. And that's something that God has promised us. No man can save himself from the power of God. Again this no other brother. And our, our unified topic said, God foretells, listen to what it said, God foretells this church. You know what? I'm going to leave you with this. God is still foretelling mm -hmm. this church. Mm -hmm. The question is, are we listening? He, he stopped. He's still telling destruction right now today. He's foretelling it right now. Where are we living? No. I think I might just plan one day. We go in the wood. We're going to have a church and call it a party. See how many we get to come. See, our party going to be with the law. Mm -hmm. We're going to have communion like we're having today. We're going to have some wine and bread. <laughs> when we tell them we're having wine and bread, they think they're going to get wine and food. But we're going to have some food, but it's going to be food from hell. We're going to see how many stay at the party. And how many come and say, I thought they were having a party, man. This was like having a church, man. Man, you told me about this. They fooled us. I come all the way down here with that. <laughs> Let go.